So what we're looking at is a two scale model, right, of Jerusalem on a one to 50 ratio. So one centimeter equals 50 centimeters, so two centimeters is one meter, right, three feet. And this is using real limestone, right, like the actual stones that would have been used for all the building material. All right, now if we were, if we were in real life, where would we be standing from this viewpoint? On the Mount of Olives, very good, right? So this is what Jesus would have seen, right? The view that he would have looked at, right? When he comes in Jerusalem with the final, on his final week, right? So of course we see, right, what sticks out, right? The beautiful temple, the platform, the Antonio Fortress, right? You guys have a sense of how large the Antonio Fortress was and how uh, imposing, right, and intimidating the fortress what is, and you can see how it's, it allows for easy access onto the sort of the top promenade of the Temple Mount. Right, the portico is surrounding it, giving shade to the pilgrims. Right, and the western wall, right, is the sort of the back wall, right, where the porticos are. Right, on the other side would be the western wall. Now, and we see the stove over here on the left, right, the red tiled gabled building giving again more more shade to some of the some of the pilgrims the sanhedrin would have met right in the grounds of the temple it moved from different places it used to be like on the left hand side of the of the sort of the interior of the sort of that inner rectangle that surrounds the temple on the left hand side Right, you can see some steps leading up to some rooms. That, those were the original Sanhedrin rooms. And you can see where, right, on this, the southern steps, you can see for those on this side, you can see the southern steps leading up to the southern wall. Right, you would walk underneath right, uh, this tunnel going underneath the stoa and then pop out right, right over there right, with this amazing, right, with the, you can just imagine like a blinding light coming up out of the tunnel with the, Sunlight bouncing off the limestone, right? Smelling the smelling the the burning of the sacrifices, all the sounds, right? To the pilgrims and the Levites singing and the trumpets, right? Just some uh, sensory overload for a small pilgrim from the Galilee. Now, uh, Gentiles were also could also come up to the Temple Mount and offer a sacrifice, right? But they could they couldn't go as far as the Judeans. You can see just sort of surrounding the, the temple inner rectangle, the temple courtyard, there is like this little boundary line, sort of like, looks like little dots, or not dots, but uh, barriers, right? Now those barriers were the boundary as far as Gentiles could go. Josephus tells us that there was a sign in Greek and Latin that basically says that for any Gentile who passes beyond this, or is taking his life to his own hands because the punishment is death. And we've actually found this, um, this marker indicating that, that this is as far as Gentiles could enter into the courtyard. You go into the first door into the temple uh, area. This is the courtyard, the court of the women. Right, this was as far as they could, the women could enter. And they'd go up these 18 steps through the bronze gate of Nicanor. Now there is a, there is a story in the Talmud that talks about how there was an Alexandrian Jew who wanted to donate the, the, these bronze doors to the temple. And he is on a ship making his way to, to the land of Israel. And there is a large storm. And the, and the sailors on the ship, they, you know, they need to lighten the load of the ship. And so they throw off one of the doors. And they want to throw off the other one. And Nicanor is like, no, no, no. You throw this off, you're throwing me off. And I guess he was an important and powerful person. They didn't throw him in the door off. They get to Jaffa. And when they get to Jaffa, what do they see lying on the shore? The door that they threw over. Right now. And that goes to, to the temple. Now, in the 20th century, where our Hebrew University is, they found graves from the second temple period. And they found one of these graves with archaeological gold. Right? They found writing. They found the ossuary with the bones in it, and on it, right, it says, these are the bones of Nicanor, giver of the gates, or the doors, right? So maybe that, would, maybe that story is actually true, and that's literally his grave, right? Because it's really interesting that you both have this guy named Nicanor, who is the giver of the gates. <clears throat> we see here the golden 
gate, right, that, that the Messiah needs to enter in through coming from the Kidron Valley. Over here on the right, just to the right of the Temple Mount, we see the Sheep's Gate, right, on the eastern wall in the pools of Bethesda. These rectangular buildings, or the uh, rectangular squares buildings with the red tiles around it, right, those are the pools of Bethesda, that's where Jesus healed. Right, the, the invalid man. Now, once you go through the, the bronze gates of Nicanor, you are in the court of Israel. Right, the men, the Levites and the priests, they offer their sacrifices and perform their sacrifices there. You, and the gatehouse, or the gates of the doors of the temple were, were these beautiful inlaid gold doors with uh, amazing artistic work that Josephus writes about how you have like golden vine leaves with grapes and pomegranates. Just very intricate uh, artisan met uh, metallurgic work, right, that would have uh, been very beautiful uh, for, uh, you know, for the temple itself. A lot of people like to think that, a lot of people um, believe that the Southern Steps is a place where Jesus and his followers would do a lot of preaching and, and talking to the crowds as they're either leaving the temple, right, uh, or coming into the Temple Mount complex. Pilgrims, before they could enter into the Temple compound or the Temple Mount, right, they need to pay an entrance fee, right? And this was the half shekel coin of Tyre, right? Now, the reason why you needed to use the half shekel corn of Tyre. And it's interesting because it, the, the corn of Tyre, the silver shekel of Tyre actually has an image on it. It's like a great image on it. And you aren't really supposed to have these kinds of things. And the fact that it was used for the entrance of the temple, right, is quite interesting. But the reason why they do it, right, is because the coins of the ancient world, right, their value was based off their weight, right, and the value of the metal material. Right now, depending on how good or bad your economy is, right, your coins might be watered down with other alloys. They might be sort of clipped. This actually becomes a major problem when you know you get these little clippings off of these silver coins. But the night, but the silver shekel of Tyre was was the silver standard of its day. Right, you was always 97.3% silver. You could guarantee. It. Take it to the bank. There's no watering down of the alloy of the silver shekel of Tyre. Right, and this is what you need. Now, if you are you know, pilgrims coming from all over the world, right, coming from Persia, coming from you know, North Africa, Greece, Thrace, Rome, right, they're coming with the local coins. Right, and in order to get this half shekel or the silver shekel, right, they need to exchange. Right, that's what the money changers were for. Right, but Jesus gets upset with the money changers because where are they? They're on the Temple Mount. Right? There's no need to have the money changers over there because all the money exchanging should have been done before you even get there. Right? This is what upsets him. Right? This wall that we see directly parallel to us, like these very large towers, and then you have a, an interior wall sort of in the inner of the city coming around sort of like in a horseshoe shape or like a fish hook, and then mix up with the Antonia Fortress. Right? That's the Herodian wall. Right? That's the second wall. We don't know the path of that. If you look at the pools of Bethesda, right, they're in between. They're sandwiched in between this third wall. That third wall, that like larger third wall that goes around, right, that's the wall that Agrippa starts, the King Agrippa in the, like, the year 41 AD starts to build. And then his friend Caligula says, stop building the wall. If we have to, if there's any war, we got to go through it. We don't want to do with that. You guys already have two. That's enough. So he stops building the wall. And then it gets finished by the rebels between the year 66 and 70. The only thing that's different, right, that Jesus, in this model than what Jesus would have seen is that third wall, right? All right, let's head over here to the south.